Welcome back to Cosmic Brilliance, folks. I'm happy you're here. I've had several requests from subscribers to have a roundtable of well-informed secret space project participants and super soldiers. So here it is. <laughs> super soldier Mary Beaver will be my point person today because this is her first time on a show with me and many of you have not met her yet. Apollomy Mendelian, most of you know by now from our current mini series that we're doing together. She's a dragon, fae, super soldier from Creator Source's original first universe. Ileana Star Traveler is a, was a secret space program technician and an ET experiencer and is a prolific author, researcher, and healer with multiple skills. She first went public in August 2015 and has done two shows with me clarifying humanity's true galactic history, one of my key passions. So we are ready to roll. This show is not going to focus on Mary's secret space program experience, because Mary, Apollomy, and Ileana have all shared their SSP experiences on other shows. And you know me by now, I like new things and not to repeat. This show is focused on gaining greater insights and proof of expansive truths about our human history and journey, which indeed involved and has always involved living with extraterrestrials and multiple species on this seed planet Earth. My guests have visited multiple locations on an off world through actual physical contact, remote viewing with a record of super accuracy, by the way, and astral travel. And through these modes, they travel and are able to activate ancient technologies that are revealing themselves in our oceans and in the inner honeycomb caverns of earth and even off world. Multiple arcs think Noah's Ark, which I believe was an actual spacecraft, contains many genetic libraries of DNA species and more. You will learn as all three guests share their deeper skills, how they decode alien writing, activate and turn on ancient artifacts such as pyramid generators and the sacred artifacts kept within crystalline built citadels or towers, and not to mention the crystalline powered spacecraft we'll discuss. Most of you subscribers have learned from my previous shows that activation abilities come from DNA bloodline lineages because advanced tech is self-protective and only allows entrance if you yourself have the same coherent DNA frequencies within you, such as the ancient Atlantean DNA. Atlantis is indeed arising and it is an exciting time of revealing. And by the way, all three of my guests have full abilities activated and are formidable yet gracious, my favorite personality combo. <laughs> so welcome everyone. And I'm glad we're able to make this happen considering you're so busy. And Mary, I know you have three children to take <laughs> care of on, and a mother on top of it. So thank you all yeah. for being here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's always a pleasure to, to be on your show. Oh, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to do very short bios because we want to get to the meat of the uh, show. So <clears throat> Mary Beaver was a super soldier in the U.S. Army and SSPs with very high clearances, an ET experiencer and linguistic specialist, which includes being only one of eight people that is able to decode the ancient Phoenician language. She comes from some of the oldest and most powerful multi-generational bloodline families, as is common in super soldiers. And you can find info about her on her more recent shows. Apollomy is a dragon fae super soldier who was sent here from Source's first universe that follows the law of one. And if you listen to our recent show together, she was sent here on Earth since Atlantis was first created. Ileana Star Traveler was a secret space program technician, ET experiencer, is a prolific author, researcher, and psychic healer, and she has had several lifetimes on Atlantis as well. So everyone ready to go? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Mary, you very briefly <clears throat> mentioned in an earlier show this week, because I've watched all your shows, that your ancestry goes back to the very first king so tell me details of what you know about King El's ancestry. Did he and his group arrive 
as ETs on Earth? What was their DNA? And how does that affect your mission now? Um, so it's King Neil. Uh, oh, Neil. And, Neil, yeah. So if you if you Google uh, the bloody hand of King Neil, <laughs> you'll see that whole mess. So what it was is when they, they conquered and pillaged whoever the beings were at that time in Ireland, um, <clears throat> I believe it was him or his brother or something, and they both wanted to be king. So I mean, men are going to be men, right? <laughs> so they decided they were going to race their ships and whoever got on land first would be king. <laughs> he was losing. So he cut his own hand off and threw it on shore after settling his kingdom and whatever, uh, and looking at, you know, the damage of the war, uh, he, he rode by this farm that was obviously destroyed and it was a, a wheat farm. Um, so there was this little boy. Uh, I don't know how old he was, and he had a soft heart for him, and so he adopted him officially, uh, but he was considered the uh, the adopted bastard son of King Neil, and his name was Wheat, so that way they could remember where he found him. So I am actually the bloodline of Wheat, but if you know anything about these elite families, they don't actually adopt outside their bloodlines. We just don't know you know down here who we belong to right they know all of us you know because they they use us as you know whatever they want <laughs> right so, fascinating yeah and so and in in some of my shields in our family you could see like the lion and on top of the one of the shields it has wheat sacks and stuff so it's there was a marriage contract and I, at one point, contacted National Geographic to see if they could help me get, you know, find out about this stuff. And they were like, well, we can't get involved. And I'm like, God, that would be so great. You know, they could ship us everywhere. We could go through this whole journey of a biography of discovery. But because I was just more interested in the treaties, what those looked like, you know, the marriages during all these wars that were my family were involved in. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. So you started really researching. Good for you. Yeah. And what, what dates approximately was King Neil? Uh, well, I tracked him down to 1111. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I am part. Okay. So here's the misconception of humanity. Of course, there's going to be your religious people that are going to be like, no, man started 6,000 years ago um they they didn't um we're part of the ancient bloodlines and so i can if i if i really get down deep in there and maybe do some favors somewhere in the high levels i can i can trace it back to seventy five thousand years mm. that makes sense yeah and, and by the way most of my audience is pretty sophisticated and has watched a bunch of things and yeah uh, <laughs> you know i honor all spiritual beliefs because we're an international show but no matter what our spiritual beliefs we are here hopefully to expand our consciousness and not remain rigid so that's the path i take so feel free to say whatever you wish to okay, okay. well uh, i don't like to offend anybody but no 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 it's all a waking up process there's there's truth there's two truths in the bible there's satan's truth and then there's god's truth you just i mean because he the son couldn't take out the father's word because he needed the word in order to manipulate the the vessel right mm -hmm. so i always tell people you have to be able to feel which one is which but if you're you know too intoxicated or being microwaved you're not gonna be able to feel the frequencies when you open the bible so or the jones didn't get in until whales so so tell me about that really briefly uh jones was the lords and knights uh in wales and that's where one of the the treaty i believe a princess was married over to the king or somebody in wales uh during the irish english wars so that's how we became slaves as we were prisoners of war so then we were sent over here to the americas which again was very interesting i can't believe they shipped over a 105 year old lady but okay <laughs> wow that's a yeah lot. well uh, you definitely have got norwegian and and you're like a viking sister of mine so you gotta have so yes much. well i i have 45 percent scandinavian and norwegian and if anybody knows scandinavian it's just the northern part of norway so there's a whole different fight about that yeah. <laughs> those guys split one was 
villagers. The others just wanted peace. And but yeah, they couldn't live without each other. And when they stopped fighting each other, they went after everybody else. So. Uh, <laughs> tell you. So um, now you previously mentioned in another show that your family has DNA of the giants. Your brother, I think, uh, one brother was close to seven feet tall, and the other six and a half, or uncle. You also mentioned that you wear makeup because your eyes are ivory. So my question is, um, is that Anunnaki related and what genetics are in your DNA? So this is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. I know it will. The Anunnaki actually are not from here per se. They Their ancestors were, but there was some point in our history that they fled um, and they came back as the master builders, but they, they're more of the parasitical just my personal opinion and my knowledge they they like to conquer and take uh so again our our history goes back way farther than anybody knows um but i don't have anunnaki so i've never my bloodlines never left the planet Mm. so the what is the ivory eyes about uh it's just the angelic because angels actually don't have dark features on their face so I'm a I'm a cusp between the redhead and the albino. So I have the red hair uh, here, but when I take all the makeup off, there's no eyelashes, no eyebrows. That's interesting because one of my questions for you is, do you have seraphim or angelic in your soul? I'm angelic. Yeah, I come from the prime <clears throat> and the primes are the archangels. Right. Many of the archangels are also considered seraphim uh there's so there's different class i mean there i mean you've got your your healing angels it's up that on earth as in heaven we all have our different classifications so i'm a fighters (laughs) i would be one of the warrior archangels (laughs) (laughs) no kidding (laughs) but i'm a healer i mean they had they had combat healers too so Mm -hmm. i i haven't um my genes just like your guys's are you know they're broken apart so i can't heal a human uh physically um but i can heal small animals like i can give them back life um and i can i can heal them from dying so you can bring animals back from the dead quote unquote but not no and so you can't interfere with death once the soul has left the vessel you can't interfere with that that is again that's a whole different dimension and if you mess with that god it becomes some kind of celestial fight and then that's where it becomes toxic so no, if the, if the vessel is still, if the soul is still in there and it's saying, maybe I don't want to leave, then yes, I can give it some angelic energy and it will, it, it can reheal the body and give the, the chance. But there's, there's cases where it shouldn't live. Like with, um, I used to, I'm a farmer. So uh, we did chicks with my autistic son and some of them would come out deformed because they were in the egg too long and I'd help them get out and I know how to keep them alive. Uh, just by using the frequencies, you know, you just hold them into the circle of life and you give them a little bit of your essence and they're fine. But the thing is, is you can't fix the damage. So I don't, I don't have that ability. And if I do, it's locked in the broken DNA um, or the suppressed DNA. And yeah, so it's like with Down syndrome, again, if we get into that, the body doesn't match the soul. So it gives a certain feature of the physical and the facial to indicate that hey this is a really high level god that came down to teach you something and you tricked it into um, a lesser body form Mm -hmm. so but i can heal the brain but i can't heal the physical part i can't give them like a face like ours yeah okay i just wanted to when you said i can bring back the animals i just wanted to clarify that for people listening what back meant <laughs> like back well the- usually anything three minutes is considered dead so if it's like five or six minutes again if the soul hasn't detached from the vessel mm-hmm. i can connect with the soul and you know give it a chance if it wants if not then i let it go okay so can you specifically share your genetics <clears throat> you know, like your et genetics or is a pure angelic or whatever that you are holding in your body you may not be able to share all of them maybe they're top secret but 
They are. I don't know what they are. They won't give them to me. I just know that when you have a, a Archangel Clarence, that you are part of the Archangel. Okay. Bloodline, yeah. Yeah. Eliana, what about? Uh, I have a question for Mary. Was King King Neil able to regenerate his hand? Did he have that ability after the race? Because you said he threw the hand to win the race. Um, was he able to regenerate the body parts? I don't. I don't know. I didn't after I I usually just kept going to see where and how far I could find it. Um, but I actually I called the the Irish um archives i guess and they said they don't send information overseas anymore but so if i wanted any more information i'd have to go visit them and same thing with wales so it's it's really funny i have a friend over in in wales and he has a last name by jones i'm like oh my gosh wouldn't that be weird if you're related <laughs> so i was like one day i'm gonna get over there and he said he would take me anywhere that would show our history and um but yeah they don't want to it could just be me there's just really something about mary that yeah <laughs> i never get to get my hands into much there's there's roadblocks everywhere so oh well that's not surprising because you're yeah such a, <laughs> a heavy hitter put it that way um right. <laughs> um so a lot of people ask and are very confused about the difference between angelics and humans if they can be the same how that works uh, since you said you're angelic and you're here, could you explain a little bit about that for people? Yeah. So the human vessel, when we were created here, again, just to my knowledge, other people may have more or different ones because there is different God creators. Not everybody on the planet was given this particular strand. So when you go into the DNA, um, we were created from the source. So I don't know if you know anything about when you when you go down the line from the hierarchy from the very original creator like his his god creators would be the equivalency of the scientists here they help create and when he wanted to create our species he gave some of his essence his genetics or her or however you want to say that uh the they have both energies up there so you wouldn't be wrong either way um and so we were made directly from creation. Uh, so uh, that's where a lot of the jealousy came in because there's, it's, it's the pyramid effect. You know, here's God and here's everybody else. Well, ours were thrown right up under him. And so all these other beings were like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> now that makes them more powerful than us. And that's kind of where the, that, you know, fight was against us. That was the issue with the jinns and the fallen angels and all that, right? Like jealousy and different things going on. The jinn are the fallen angels. Oh, they are the same as the fallen angels. Yeah. Yeah. And they can still leave the planet. They have wings. They can fly. Um, but yeah, and Lucifer is a jinn, but he's still an angel. They're all angels, but they just have one set of wings. Now, what type of angel is different? So you do have your earth angels, which heaven on earth would have been their era, right? And then we came. And that that huge fight kind of broke out, and <laughs> it was like I'm going to corrupt them because I want my children uh, to have the pure essence. And but then you have the angels above all of them. So the wings, again, from my understanding, from my the prime that I come from, you have the one wings is the earth angels, the the two to three wings is the archangels, the three to six wings is it just keeps going up. And then the, the you know, it's when you reach the almighty, he can take any appearance he wants, feminine, masculine. And it's like a prethla. I only saw him once um, and it was wings all over the place. So that and sounds they, like what Apollomy describes <laughs> as uh, Metatron. <laughs> yeah so but yeah I, it's and they they don't talk you're you're talking telepathy so it's just it's energy frequencies so i don't physically talk in words when i am dealing with uh the fates and the heavens and stuff it's it's just telepathy and energies right okay so, so there's a lot of levels of different like there's a lot of levels of us so exactly do either of you two want to add anything to that? 
Well, I definitely, I don't come from the angelics. I come from the L race and they're 12 dimensional beings that energetically can also take on any shape and form. So they, if they wanted to, they could have wings and you would see it as energy, like glowing blue, white energy, because 12 dimensional beings can expand their energy from inwards, outwards. They can have non-corporeal bodies or corporeal, they can create ships from energy. And then when they're done with the ships, they can dissolve them and go back energetically. And they're multi-dimensional travelers. So they can go back in time, forwards in time, or our current period of time. So they're time travelers and they're both male and female. They're here to help us with ascension process. Every individual wisdom life form that is of their race, the L race, and some have said it's Elohim. I'm not sure if they're Elohim or not, but they are energy, pure energy. So they can go to different universes as well. And they don't come from this universe. They come from 15,000 years in the future, but not from this one universe. They come from a higher dimensional universe. They came back to help us. So we reach the shift point horizon in our earth to be utopian hundred years from now. So they're here to help with that and to remove the darkness that's not supposed to be here. And that was hindering us. Yeah. Thank I saw you. That on the timeline. It takes a, a um you see mm-hmm. that as another timeline? What what did you I say? Said, I saw that on a timeline. Oh, on a timeline. Okay. On it a takes future. a village <laughs> to come in and do this ascension. What about you, Apollo me? I came from Source Creation Hanova to this universe as punishment, but also I had a mission, well, I still have a mission, basically to keep an eye on some of the higher life forms that have come into this universe. Uh, If they get too unruly, I do have the right to send them back to Source Universe. And, and I also work for the Starseed Council from Source Universe, which basically uh, takes care of seed planets. So my species is from Henova. I am a hybrid of two species. Uh, and then my physical body down here that, that got created is actually has genetics of those two species plus uh, some human Palladian and draconian. So dragon, fey, uh, fey chakrell, elf, elven, inner earth human, and draconian. And draconian. Draconian and dragons are kind of similar, but they're two different um, subspecies. Okay, so Mary, now this is one of the things I definitely uh, went zing with you is when I heard in your other shows that you had previously mentioned Mm. that the more ancient Phoenician language you are able to decipher. And so do you want to explain to people and that you're only one of six or eight people in the entire world that can translate ancient Phoenician, which is, of course, one of the reasons they wanted to use you for that so can you give us the details that you can on the two kinds of Phoenician language and how and uh, how that happened Uh, well I don't know the the paleo and the Hebrew that's kind of where they were like getting frustrated when I was at DC um, because it's it's the language of the slaves if you will which is unfortunate but and I think there's a movie that touches on that. The mommy, remember where the mommy was like, oh, the language of the slaves. So that he was talking about the Phoenician. So, um, and again, that was back in the time where they were just shifting over to the, you know, the power struggle of the good and evil uh, when the pyramids were built and which are the pyramids are more of a terraformer. So you can Google what those are. Those are interesting. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that a little later. Yeah. Yeah. So the ancient Phoenician does date back to seventy five thousand years ago, and I can't really say where the other one came from, uh, only because that person's still alive, and I don't want to get in trouble. Um, but an individual had a 
<clears throat> what do you call it? An M M amulet, an amulet. Uh, and he asked me if I could transcribe it because again in Phoenician but I mean I could most of it but there were other symbols in there that were just different I was like whoa and I was like I don't know what that means but it was it was just a like a, a 4D um, uh, rectangle and each rectangle had just it was just a map of like wow mind-blowing like how did they fit that all that on this little tiny you know amulet that they would wear on their chest and a lot of good stuff in there um even gave the name of lucifer <laughs> wow can you share yeah. can you share any of that was it like like i can language give... and everything or is it all top secret you can't share it uh, no i i can't give the real name of lucifer because if you know his name you can bring him back to the planet and we don't want that right now so <laughs> 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 no but i mean just what other info you got oh so it had like the star maps it it it, it detailed like literally things like you would say so you could open portals and you know you could draw in more uh alchemy from the dark sun which i know people a lot of people don't know about the light and the dark sun um but redheads are keepers of both uh we we draw the energy from it albinos draw energy straight from source himself that's why they're so heavily abused and neglected um because they don't want people to you know feel the purity of uh source because they're i mean they're just i would love to sit and just <laughs> talk to like straight albinos and they they are just so full of information but they're those guys right there but yeah so the the phoenician uh this tablet this it was just so small it was just not that big at all and it had so much information like the whole world packed in this little thing mm -hmm. and it was all a map it would like lead from you would be reading one little section and then it would lead down to another section on the other side of it and it's like oh my gosh it's, it was like where did you get this and he said the djinn gave it to him to protect him <clears throat> Fast. and i was like fascinating was like, oh be careful with those guys <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so but I keep I keep forgetting that we're in the the time like we're in the time that you know it's not they're not bad the bad ones can't do anything anymore I mean they can still do their tricks but yeah the they they can't do much anymore so that one dated it talked about stuff from 120,000 years ago mm -hmm. okay any other specifics because that's really fascinating so it was maps um any other thing that comes up uh mm -hmm. certain uh alchemic magic like protection uh um what can i say about it that uh curses had yeah, curses on it like how you could curse your enemy <laughs> wow and does it did it have the author's name who wrote this or who no no okay. nobody so they don't in the ancient times there were no authors you didn't claim anything as yours because it's not really yours does that make sense yeah even though you were gifted with the thought of it progressing it was something that somebody higher up gave to you to make better on the area in which you live in so yes we have all these ideas but we are constantly downloaded by our higher self um other people other beings you know and since we're down here we are we're secretly being upgraded but again you can't do it fast because we'll all explode um because we're still just a very <laughs> sensitive <laughs> tissue i'm just gonna let it, you guys know easily on <laughs> yeah you know spontaneous I, combustion yeah <laughs> it really also, is also don't get too cr close to the the giants that happens right yeah i was probably the closest one because we shared a similar dna but not close it, it hurts it's the vibration you're just like uh it's 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 like you're being electrocuted you can't explode i mean they've had soldiers walk up to it just to watch them explode it's awful <laughs> like oh my why would god you... but you're drawn to them because you can feel their their angelicness but because we're in the third dimension and they're higher, you can't really, you can't get close to them. Are their and their frequency is way too high. Mm -hmm. so and this, they, is the, this is the giants that for the last ten years, folks, 
have been activating stasis pods and all over the place and uh, they've been coming alive. And unfortunately what's been happening is certain groups have been running around um, capturing them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like when you go to the summer gate, if you actually get the chance to go to the summer gate and go beyond it, like Captain Bird did, you have to go through a process of cleansing and you have to get rid of all the parasites. Cause it, you know, they don't, it's the same thing here. They don't want you bringing in your, you know, uh, defects into their world. Um, and you have to be upgraded genetically just to live past that gate. Okay. Now the summer gate, um, folks, Admiral Byrd went into the center of the earth. So the summer gate you refer to as what? That's the entrance. One of the entrances. Like North or South pole or, or that one's South summer okay. gate is in our, okay. Antarctica. Just, I get into details just for specifics. Okay. So um, that's fascinating. So do you view the giants as a higher, more evolved species? Yes. Well, if you think about it, you're an evolved species, but if the government started coming after you, you're going to go hide, right? <laughs> right. Because a lot of us have people, an army to protect ourselves. A lot of people just call them Nephilim and fallen ones and bad ones, and they have all different names. Not all of them are, but they are they are all captured in the event that they have some kind of, you know, uh, fifth and fourth um uh beings abilities because the sixth and the the seventh our our generation and the last generation we were cut off from our abilities and so that's why when somebody pops up with something the government's right there that's right. what i was saying your handlers are telling on you because they're like they want they want that glory they're like oh i got something you guys got to come check it out my kid yeah. levitates things <laughs> and then the kid's gone right i know it's like you have to keep your light <laughs> down it's, it's right it's tricky. Um, okay, what about Ileana? Do you have anything you want to ask her? I'm sure you do. Well, I, I have a comment about the giants because I remote view giants waking up in the Middle East and their energy. They talk telepathically. They don't verbally talk to each other. They're telepathic and they're guarding these wands and staffs, something that's supposed to elevate this planet in the light of the planet and when I, when I was connecting with them, I could feel how they want to come to the surface of this planet, but they're in hiding because they're constantly being pursued by black ops operations and groups. So they, they're on the move. They don't stay in the same place too long not to get captured. So, and again, if any human comes near them, they're going to feel the telepathic connection, almost this crackling energy from their telepathy and it, it could literally smash a brain because you, they don't communicate verbally, these ones that I saw. So for them to stay hidden, to stay quiet and quietly move, not to be captured, that's that I think that supports what Mary was saying, that military can't come near them. And if they capture them, sometimes the military might be killed because these giants have upper abilities. Her, uh, that's fascinating. What about you, Apollomy? What do you have to add to that? Uh, the only giants that I remember is basically when I was Bridget, uh, you know, because Dagda was a was a giant. I I kind of remember some of the giants when Antarctica was not covered in ice during the time of Atlantis. So and yeah, they are very telepathic and. It can take them a little while to get used to interacting with smaller things, you know, so that they're not hurting the people. Because, again, that's a lot of power coming into a tinier skull. So it can do it can do quite a bit of damage. It, it, when they try to speak to you, it's like they're extremely yelling in your head, but someone's like taking a bell and just ringing it at the same time over your skull. <laughs> Whoa. That is that is really fascinating. Now you said they're telepathic, as most things are. And I remember Mary, you mentioned in one of your shows that I noticed that um, the more ancient Phoenician is more of telepathic than a written language. Is that correct? Right. Well, like I said, the language of the slaves is a spoken word because the um, the the bloodline of Cain, uh, even though he was educated, that's where he deprived uh, his people. They could speak, but they weren't allowed to write. <clears throat> so when they created their own language, I guess, 
And that's where the, but that was the writing at the time um, was the Phoenician language. They created their own and it's, it's completely different from ours. And I have the actual photos of the, the tablets, the ones that they show. And that's why I'm like, when people say that they can read those, I'm like, you're not reading the right one because I saw them make them. And I saw how they like covered it in dirt, made it look like they found it in some tunnel. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. So that kind of irritates me. If you, the real ones, and I, I have had um, two preachers or what, I don't know what the Pope, I guess maybe underlying smaller Popes. I don't know what you call those. Uh, two of them called sure. me, I think in 20... Either 20, the end of 2020 or sometime in the beginning of 2021, um, I was contacted by the Vatican and they a wanted surprise me, there. Right. They wanted to take me to the halls of knowledge. And I was like, I'm not allowed to go there. And so no, but why? <laughs> and they were like, Why aren't you allowed to go there? And I was like, Yeah, those other those other things aren't gonna let me go there. And they were like, Well, you know, we have clear, we will take you. And I was like, No, I'm not going. They're like, Yeah, you are. And I'm like, No, I'm not going. But what do you want me to good? I mean, why? Why do you want me down there? And they were like, well, we want you to read some of the the Emerald Tablets. And I was like, oh, and I'm like, well, which one? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. there's more than there's more than 10, just so everybody knows. Um, <clears throat> but they're dark. There are real crystal emeralds. So it's it's way darker than what you see online. They're not going to really show you the real ones because you could feel the frequency even on a video. Um, but it's not even really transcribing with, you know, paper. I can, but it's more touching. You have to activate it. It's like a computer, like an ancient computer that when you touch it, it's going to give you this big pressure screen and it just, it, it speaks to you. You can see it if you're worthy enough with the knowledge. So that's how that works. Now, I just want to be clear that this is in their places underground where they have all the yes. Arca yes. artifacts and everything they've gathered through the ages. They don't want people to know. This isn't like a hall of records somewhere else. I just wanted to be clear with that. Well, the hall, yeah, the halls of knowledge are definitely uh, entrapped within the Illuminati's and the, the two kingdoms above us. So, Okay. And, okay, so you did the Emerald Tablets and you did the Ant uh amethyst the um amulet oh no i won't read the tablets i refuse oh you refuse those okay mm -hmm. because they uh, the only one they really want me to read is the thousand years of life now i don't want to give satanists a thousand years of life right they're always obsessed, <laughs> they're obsessed. not just the bad the, the extreme ones let's clarify that there aren't really there are some out there but they're not all bad so yeah. the extremists we don't want them to have a thousand years of life they're obsessed with immortality right yes they are yeah and that's why that's why i mean that's why i was you know designed to be so resilient to death i don't know <laughs> well uh, that's probably true with all you guys on this thing yeah. anybody um want to add anything before we continue go ahead eliana so i i gone to the halls of amenti and i saw holographic images of the tablets and there's 14 tablets that I know of what I was shown. I didn't specifically choose the holographic section to read, but there's also different thrones, throne of life, throne of fire, throne of air. Like if you sit down in one of those thrones, it amplifies something in you. So you have to be very careful with artifacts. You can't just go read the Emerald Tablets of Toth. The book is good and it describes a summary of the tablets pretty good what Toth wrote but you don't have life and death in your hands. That's what these tablets describe, immortality, alchemy. So you have to be very careful what you access when, and what you bring back with you. Because if you download the knowledge and read it, somebody could steal that from your brain telepathically. So having access to that can put you in danger. So I'm not surprised that Mary said, no, I'm not reading those tablets. Because what's on those tablets literally is life and death and much more. It's the hidden secrets of history. So if it comes into the wrong hands, it could cause destruction or it could cause light and peace and everything depends how you use the information from those tablets. 
So I didn't go and read every tablet because it's like, I don't want the knowledge to bring it back and somebody else to access it through me. I don't want to be the keeper of that. Yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. What about you, Apollomy? I just had a, a comment about like how the tablets are more telepathic than than script writing. I'm sure there's script on there, but it's it's like a lot of ET crystal knowledge to where mm -hmm. you have to actually activate your third eye in order to receive the information because it's all downloaded. It's yeah. all they have used frequencies to actually inscribe on those tablets. And I'm pretty sure those tablets are probably blank. So the only way to actually probably read them is literally having that high enough frequency to even access those. And I've ran into crystal tech like this before on my missions. Uh, it can, if you're not of the right frequency, it can actually download uh, viruses into you and it can also download uh, frequencies into you that you're not able to register very well and it can mess you up yeah. so whoa fascinating because we're going to get into crystal technology so that's really fascinating yes Eliana so I actually sat on the throne of life and I had a blue sphere come up and enter me and it made my temperature much more hotter by five degrees and when I come came back I was sweating like I was hot um, and now I can like when it's really cold I don't feel cold. That heat, it amplified my body. So be careful if you sit on the artifact, it might do something to you. And it downloaded a lot of knowledge history of what's coming in the future from that blue sphere because this was the silver throne of life. So if you think of the flower of life, that's actually real. And yes. it's not a bad source of energy. If it's not, you know, if it's not... Um, shifted and the symbolism isn't changed it's not a bad frequency but if it's inverted then it can be used for darkness depends how you use the symbols and the languages mm, awesome. i wasn't i wasn't aware that they actually had all the thrones that's interesting mm -hmm. calls of amenti they have like but that's seventh dimensional you have to vibrate at that frequency i first went to vakuntha it's 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 the indian gods where they are so I went to Vakuntha, but I had to raise my energy. And yeah. once it was seventh dimensional energy, I ended up in the halls of Amenti. And again, I, 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 I raised my hand and I felt the energy of each throne. So I could not sit in the throne of fire because it would literally poof me out. But the throne of life, I could sit on because it vibrated with that silver energy. And it's crystalline based as well. So it's not just a um a stone relic a stone thro throne it is crystalline silver energy that it's made out of and the sphere was energy a blue orb yeah the only thing that i that i know is you have to be a master at that element in order to sit in those chairs um i'm not fully the not completely master because it did heat me up throne of life so it made me hotter so i came back with symptoms but I was able to sit on it and still live. So yeah. that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I would say I was like 75% ready to be on it. If I was a hundred percent, nothing would have happened to side effects. So it's kind of like more energy work to be done on myself to raise that vibration up to specs. I would sit on it just to see if it blow up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course you would. <laughs> Harry's the humble one of the group. <laughs> Let's see what happens. No. <laughs> this is why you go first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. go for it. Get there, there's a misconception. It's not the Marines. It's really the Army that go in there. Because we're the ones that really just screw it all up. <laughs> Oh my God, that's great. This is too much fun. <laughs> okay, so I just want to do one more connection with the Phoenician because it's so unusual to have someone who is adept at that. Is this true that ancient Phoenician was one of the languages of the ones referred to as Yahshua, Yeshua, or Jesus? And um, when I first saw you, another hit I got, and I am certainly can be wrong, uh, is that you somehow not only had one of the most ancient 
bloodlines, but that you were very connected to the Magdalena lineage. And Mega folks, at least from what I know, M-A-G-A, is a word for, in, in India, it's a word for the priestly caste, but it actually means magical training, like the three magi that visited Jesus, usually that refers to alchemists, astrologers, astronomers, magicians, you know, that kind of thing. So Mary, tell me what you can tell us if there's any truth to that and your lineage that way. So the, the three kings that <clears throat> came were Phoenician, just so you know. <laughs> ah. um, so the whole Bible story is based on Phoenicians. Okay, so all those people were Phoenician. And that's a lot of history. People are going to be like, no, we were Hebrews. And, but I don't, I mean, again, that's the slave bloodline of Cain. I wouldn't go running around telling everybody that. Um, it is, so the Phoenicians came first, but that was just that group. <clears throat> there were other groups like the, you know, the blue the blue aliens or the blue gods created a different group, which were the African uh, Africans as we know them today. Um, but they were on this side of the world where we're at right now. And it's been, they've moved around because of all the wars and there's, there's thousands of gods <clears throat> that were allowed to come down here and seed creation, but creation said, Oh, I want this design. So stick to this design. <laughs> So that was the design at the time. Before it was the gin. Before that, it was something else. And all the way back to 65 billion years ago, it was something else. So what specifically was the design? Hum the humanoid. Okay. Yeah. And that's where the, the gene comes in is we all, we're all brothers and sisters and cousins. And because we share the same noid gene <laughs> going back 65 billion years ago. Maybe the same, more. The same annoying gene. Annoying, yeah. Because <laughs> we all annoy each other in one way or another. You know? <laughs> okay, first Apollomy, then Ileana. So when you say noid, like define the physiology of noid. So noid is a certain shape that we have right now. It's just the shape because there are other beings that are similar to us, but different appearance. Like... We know that some of them have like three hand arms or six arms or, you know, lots of legs. They're still annoyed. So when you break all the genes down and the, the, we have anywhere between 24 to 34 chromosomal genes, the very first <clears throat> two to four genes is annoyed. It's called noid. They've manipulated it and changed it to something else to throw people off of what we really are. So the noid gene is the mold of creation. And then all the other God creators put in different ones. So the Noid gene was there to have the base of shape. And then on the human side, the creator said, oh, we'll put my genes in next. That's going to fuel the, you know, the essence of the uh, creation. And then anything after that is your abilities and they're all different because it depended on the i would again like the scientists on earth the god creators put in their genes of what they wanted like that's why we all have different abilities we think differently we can we, we physically work differently um it made us you know unique in that way but the noid gene is the clay model so we all follow the same sequence of the same body that's why we get confused when we see other people you know that might be blue and they have like fish ears or something and we're just like oh my god you look like us did you breed with something weird <laughs> <laughs> you know but we that's the that's the basis of the model so, so god said here's the model <laughs> create you know so no wings no tail no second set of ears right so the noid gene is just the clay model and then the the creator gods came in and put the wings and the tails and <laughs> there's that the fish there, ears <laughs> there's a pattern that's often referred to in in researchers and and uh, sspers they call it the the design of the five stars like a starfish you know uh, two arms two legs and a head so is that what you mean by like, that's the clay? That's the clay. That's the clay model. 
Okay, because humanoid model is found everywhere, all over the place now. Right, that's why we're old. That That's our key, is that's what tells you. Um, but a lot of, again, a lot of people out there believe that, like the Anunnaki, they were created here. But there was some kind of catastrophic event that made them flee. Mm-hmm. And they probably went galactically jumping everywhere. And then the earth is alive. So it'll send out signals to somebody of a higher power that has the knowledge, wizards, whatever you want to call them, you know, ancient masters. And they're allowed, they're allowed to pick up this frequency from the earth because we're created from the earth. So therefore it's like your mom, you know, something's wrong. Even it doesn't matter how far away you are. If something's wrong, you're going to be like, you're going to call them out. Hey, something's happening. Are you okay? <clears throat> that's what that is mother earth <laughs> oh, beautiful you're beautiful. getting that frequency beautiful analogy and makes sense now Ileana you being a somewhat of a geneticist in several lives <laughs> do you have any input or anything you'd like to ask yeah uh, I can give some input definitely the Noi gene is the standard it's the galactic human template two arms two legs and a head if you're adding anything extra that's splicing different genetics into the system, so it can get complicated. If you want the mermaid's tail, like you have to synthesize more genetics to add to that noid gene to make it function correct correctly, because you don't want mutants running around. So if you do it improperly, it's not going to work. Then you have to clean up the mess you made. So it has to be the genetic splicing has to be perfect. It has to be God's perfection, literally, to work correctly. And I wanted to ask Mary a question: like, do any of us have the meta gene? Because hybrid <laughs> star seeds are coming in, and like, do they have the meta gene? Because they have abilities. The kids have special abilities. Do any of us super soldiers or those kids have the meta gene in us? All of you do. You just it so. And Apollo May and I have talked about this. <clears throat> After the fifth era of man, they they stopped giving us powers because I don't know if it was maybe the the superhero complex where you had one person on the planet that you know was chaos to himself, but everybody had to save him, right? So you, this not there's no balance when everybody has powers. So it seemed like at the sixth and the seventh you know era an era can be a long distance it could be a couple thousand years it could be ten thousand years we have no idea how long <clears throat> certain frequencies of man have been here so the sixth and the seventh were taken loose of their own powers so in order for us to gain those back we either had to be taught how to do it <clears throat> and this is where the elite said eh, not everybody needs to have these powers because you know we want to keep our slaves um and they keep us locked up and then they when they see the people that come out with the powers that's where they disappear they're either going to study them put them into programs use them for uh, all intent and purpose and then they're going to draw blood hybridize them make clones <laughs> right and it's it's just a super lab of nonsense to be honest <clears throat> but I, I do understand kind of why they do it because now we have the eighth era of man coming in <clears throat> or the 8.0 edition and that's our children so you know that's why a lot of kids are seeming more smarter than the education system and you see more like teenagers bursting out uh against things or being more extreme um because their abilities are a lot more prominent now <clears throat> even though they're being shut down um it's there so they'll they're going to reach their goals faster and it's like us trying to teach our, our grandparents how to use a computer right <laughs> right right so. and, and you yourself um were labeled <clears throat> asperger's and of course we know yeah. that's very high iq in a certain way and all of those labels are really advanced beings coming in what I was going to tell you, Eliana, is that I had added the metagene as a question. So it just shows how telepathic you are. Oh, no, not me. It was source creators. Like, you got to go and ask this question. Source creator is listening to this right now. And he's like, you got to ask that question. You got to bring in the question because well, the ener energy essence is here. And it's been the energies are activated and the light is activated in galactic humans, which are us. So 
this metagene stuff is it's activating and certain people, their abilities are activating. And it's part of the horizon shift, that 100 year cycle of upgrades and evolution. It's just part of humanity's next step. And source creators like, you guys got to talk about this, bring it in. So perfect. <laughs> I added it right before the show because it's one of my passions. Um, Apollony, uh, for you in one sec, um, but I think someone should define what metagene means for people who've never heard of that. Yeah. Paul, me, do you want to go first or do you want? Like, oh, I, I've never even heard of the term before. It's called the dog I, gene I, or whatever. Okay. Mary, do you want to, you want to talk or Ileana? Either. Well, that's, that's what the, the basis of it was, is you've got the noid gene and then you have the metagene. Everybody has it, whether you can activate it or not. That's the first thing you see when you start getting your powers whether you know who it is you're seeing it's it it's him you know you'll see him in a different form whatever you're comfortable with like I said they don't have to you know look like the Greek angel <laughs> with the billions of wings right um but it, that, that's what I'm saying is everything is it's kind of like stacking onto the genes now that like the eighth era of man will be up in the probably the 40s and the 50 chromosomes Whereas we're still down here in the 34 and people are like, oh, mind blowing. And I'm like, yeah, wait till you see what comes next. <laughs> you know? So, uh, because yeah, there's those... so much disinformation about this in the, you know, and it's, it, to me, it was one of the things they were hunting for quote uh, way back in Dan Burrish's coming forward is, is like, who has the metagene? Well, well, yeah, everybody's got it. It's just whether you are, I guess clicked into it or not because if you're if you're still sleeping then you obviously you don't even think that you know water actually can rise in, up north <laughs> right <laughs> you know you're not <laughs> I don't I've seen water go the other way before and it was like how is it doing that you know I mean they're, they're gonna look at it like oh my god we're in like a, some sacred Indian burial ground or something and we just have to I, <laughs> yeah rather they're than gonna make excuses for it <laughs> rather than hire higher right higher self-consciousness so i yeah. love it makes sense to me that everyone has the metagene or the god gene or whatever now um just to clarify another thing for our first listeners who've never heard this term what does that mean it means that you can access all abilities as creator is that correct yeah uh no not all creators you're um yeah it depends on what you ask for that's why i, I don't really like the bible I don't hate the Bible. I just, I, I hate the confusion in it. So it used to teach you a long time ago, the different gods. And that's why when they refer to, oh, the Greek gods and stuff like that, the Bible even today still says the one jealous God doesn't like you worshiping the other gods. He's not saying there aren't other gods, but the Bible today says the one God, but he doesn't give the name. So you have no idea when you say almighty God, <laughs> Exactly. you're leaving it open for some gods to be like i'm bored i ain't got nothing to do let's go mess with this person <laughs> i i agree um people don't even know who they're praying to which we, right. we stress uh, i know paul and, and i in our in our shows have, i've been really stressed on it go ahead Ileana. you have a lot to add to that so the metagene it holds fifth dimensional energy like the higher frequencies of creation and creator beings that come and create so it depends on the planetary system that you're in and the planet that you're born in energetically how much your abilities are activated and how much that gene is activated the metagene the god gene according to your environment and your energetic frequency if you embody fifth density sixth seventh and eighth if you can energetically raise your vibration to that level it raises the metagene energy in you and awakens your abilities literally transforms you energetically into the crystalline essence that we're supposed to evolve into we're already 85 percent water we are crystalline it's just going to take us to the higher vibrational form and activate those abilities with the metagene energy yes follow me yeah, no, Ileana is 100% correct. And this all has to do with the piezoelectric properties of our DNA, the bones, tissue. And again, water has memory. So our planet's natural hertz frequency is raising up, which means that people are going to be born with more senses that, you know, our grandparents may have never had. And you know, experiencing this personally, I started tasting everything through my skin. 
I'm, I'm starting to be able to feel vibrations that shouldn't even be felt by, by most humans because they can't really register that sort of thing. You know, being uh, sensitive to electronics where I can feel the radiation and the frequencies coming off of it. These are things that most people don't have. But when you have that higher genetic vibration, you're going to have a lot more senses and a lot of the new generations aren't even going to know how to deal with it. You know, it's something that's new that's coming in. And if it's not wrangled in and taught, it can make you really kind of unstable because you're getting bombarded with all this stuff that you don't even know how to deal with. So it's important to, to start teaching the younger generation, you know, even with their learning disabilities or, you know, stuff like that, that, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that they're thinking and observing consciously on a different spectrum than everybody else who's on the planet. That's really important. Yes, Ileana. So electronics, it's all signal and frequency. So if one form of electronics doesn't work for you, try to get another one. Try to get a different cell phone. It might have a different signal and frequency that will not trigger your sensitivities of the seven senses or the six senses when you're beyond those five senses. Cause I'm, I'm also sensitive to signals, frequencies, electromagnetic energy. So if one device doesn't work for me, I'll just bring it back, return it and get a different one and sense the frequency and the signal of it. And if it matches and vibrates with mine, then it'll work and I'll keep it and work with it. Cause it's not going to hurt me. Yeah. I have to agree. I'm a, I'm embarrassing going into a phone shop to buy a new phone because I'm all like this. I'm like, can I turn it on and just do this? And I'm like, nope, not that one. And I'll go through like eight or nine phones. And my brother's just over there. He's like, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Why, why are you doing this to me? And I'm like, because you don't understand. <laughs> I have to live with it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> That's great. Now you did mention crystalline. So let's move into um, the next part, which is all of you having contact or knowing something about or visiting or activating because you all have unique ancient DNA. Um, I believe, Mary, didn't you say that there's something like 75 arc ships around the world? Was it, what was the 75 referring to? Was it arc ship? Yeah. So the world has its own fail safe plan. Like we do, you know, we have our backup plans. And so the ancient, and again, those art ships are a lot older than people think, <clears throat> but they, like everything else, can mold to its time. So the first beings, or the first noids, <laughs> that I know of in the ancient and the forbidden history is um, the reptanoids, and they had our same shape. Uh, they did live during the time of the dinosaurs and they had access to those ships um there were more <clears throat> at that time um and i i didn't think that the comet was real but apparently it was so i'm like I, that kind of blew my mind i'm like oh it was real i thought it was a spook thing so it did hit the planet and it did take out other ancient planets uh that we we don't know about <clears throat> um that's where a lot of the you know the the more rings of other things are out there is because there was other planets that were destroyed by that whole meteor. And I don't know if it was because maybe the gods got mad or something and just chucked some salt behind them and said, let's see where it lands kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're funny. They are funny. I'm not going to lie. They, you know, <laughs> they have their moods. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Um, so the, the, the reptanoids left, uh, before the big meteor because the, the planet and the, it was so big, they thought the planet was just going to explode. Well, it ended up, it didn't. Right. So they didn't take everybody off that planet. Now these particular reptanoids, uh, when they fled 65 billion years ago, fled to the Delta quadrant. And that's where a lot of, I would think, the newer species of reptilians came in because they've had a lot of time, you know, to mingle with other species, um, <clears throat> give or take uh, that billions of years. <laughs> okay, um, so define alpha and delta. So we're in the alpha quadrant, correct? Right. Of the galaxy or of the solar system? 
the the metaverse the metaverse okay we're in the yeah. alpha and you said they went to the delta yes yeah they fled to the delta quadrant I, well okay so i'll throw a word at you i don't know if any of you have heard it before but tesseracts oh yeah yeah okay so when when we're done with the timelines tech okay so the reason the illuminati are so high up there is because they are not part of the timelines they don't have anything to do with anybody's timelines the, they're only in the dimensions that's it so the timelines are created mostly by us we create and we mess up our own dimensional frequencies which is also referred to in some ways there's a lot of different ways to talk about the tesseract but the tesseract is infinity and it's you could put circles squares you know you can make that shape any way you want <clears throat> that's what the dimensions look like and they're infinite but we don't know what infinite looks like because we can't think past that and that's what the levels of dimensions are so the way i was taught through the secret knowledge was the tesseract was one square two squares four squares and it just kept squaring and then you'll see different drawings it takes you out of the one level of the first dimension which is the first tesseract that's just what's where the this is where the flat earthers are going to not like me so that's the flat earth <laughs> you're in the one dimension when you're on the flat earth so let's rethink that you can only go this way and that way that's it and you can find this information online uh it's no longer secret and the second dimension is the, the first box or no it's the it's creating the second box it's just making the box instead of just the one stick so third dimension is you're making the 3d box fourth dimension you're making the four boxes all together so on and so forth so it's like the ribbons of life are the dimensions but the evil ai or frequencies if you will decided to astrobate that into well the first thought was well what if i did it this way so there comes your first uh timeline separation which caused a rip it but then everybody was like oh okay well they knew how to jump back from that timeline into their dimensions so it didn't affect them it just affected everybody they thought the process to go through so then all the timelines started messing up and then somebody figured it out and wanted to go back in time without closing the gaps of the timelines that they already had which created other <laughs> issues so that's what we're kind of seeing right now is the closing of the corruption of the tesseract so we don't want those other timelines out there we don't want to go what if i was still married to my ex-husband right you don't want that timeline to come up you want to <laughs> leave that right where it's <laughs> No I'll repeat no, performances. No. Exactly. There you go. No, thank <laughs> leave, you. Leave the what ifs in the back. You know, <laughs> move forward. That's where the past. That's why they keep us like haunted about our past, so they could keep these timelines open, and we're going to constantly be like, "Well, what if I did this? Well, what if I did that?" So therefore, you've gotten too far away from the actual tesseract that you were. We forced ourselves to stay in the three dimension. So that's where the the sixth and the seventh. <clears throat> kind of you know hung themselves pretty much because they were like oh well, what if that what that whole phrase what if don't think about what if <laughs> okay this is imp this is so key because uh, uh apollo me has clarified that we're living in a free will universe right yes. unlike the other so the free will is what if correct but that's where you get stuck that's quicksand. Okay. Oh, what if I just kept going? I'll walk right past that quicksand as you're sinking lower and lower. <laughs> okay. So what's the point? Do many, many what ifs? <laughs> no. Run away. Run, Forrest. Just keep going. No, literally don't. <laughs> so, so I want people to get a takeaway from this. What is the best way for them to go through life at this point related to what you're talking about? You, so you have to forgive yourself for your past. And, and so in the secret teachings, it teaches you. And again, a lot of this is coming out. I, I do have the portal to the Illuminati and stuff like that. And I don't read everything because I didn't want nothing to do with it. 
but I do find the light stuff. I do find the things I, I sometimes read through the things that say, you know, how, how to pretty much drive this vessel, you know, cause your soul, how do you got to connect that soul to this vessel? And that's a lot of where our problem is, is, you know, what if I just didn't listen to the, this consciousness and I went over here and I was just going to go do what I wanted. <laughs> Mm-hmm. that's your free will but then there's consequences to both sides you got good consequences and bad consequences but when you keep opening those bad consequences they're making new timelines for you and the more timelines you have the more you got to heal to get back to the test rack so if you want to quote stay on shall we say the divine tesseract or the mo- the most optimized reality how would you do that consciously you have to forgive yourself for making the mistakes. You don't have to forgive the people that hurt you. That's that's like Apollo May says. That's a that's a Yahweh thing. But <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I agree with that. You know, I don't. If somebody's gonna try to kill me, it's like well, that was your consequence, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So they, you know, there and and her and I have talked about it. There is the law of one, and then there is you know, free will. If you can talk your way out of something, talk your way out of it. But again, there's going to be consequences. You have to own your action. You have to, you know, forgive the action. If you're the person that messed it up, I mess up all the time and I may not realize it at first, but I'll come back and be like, you know, I think I made a mistake. I'm not sure. What were your feelings? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Let's talk this over. And you don't have to go back to the people that hurt you, whether they knew it or not consciously, whether they were under the mind control um, you just have to forgive yourself. <clears throat> you have to heal yourself and you have to stop living in that past or those timelines will never close. And you will, you, you restrict yourself from moving forward into the higher consciousness, the longer life living, um, the age regression. And, you know, you, you can hug a tree and trees will light up and heal you, but you have to heal your own damage first. You have to own the consequence. And then find your own truth and why you did it, what you did it and be like, that was the dumbest thing I ever did and don't do it again. Right. And that will guide you back to the Tesseract. Yeah. Reality. And then the dimension. And so yeah. the goal in a certain way is to absolutely forgive. And I'm a hundred percent in agreement with you of, of everything you've done. Cause it, to me, it kind of nullifies karma from a multidimensional viewpoint when you do that. But, but then what what about people who are projecting and have dreams into the future what uh, so you're saying okay like you know let go of the past which is a good thing to do and integrate and forgive but you know where does our free will come in like oh i want to try this or i want to try this you're you're saying it's okay to try things as long as they're positive and well-intentioned and follow basically the law of one concepts is that what you're yeah okay that's been my understanding yes iliana it's like choosing the stable path in the most stable, positive timeline, because I see the future events, but I try to stick to the most positive, stable Tesseract timeline event, so I don't stray and go where I shouldn't be in the Tesseract. It's like navigating the maze. If you choose the right path in the maze, the light opens up and you see the path where you're supposed to be, because you know what's most stable and the right choice for you that's free will choice and how you make the choice to stay on the right path timeline that in the tesseract this tesseract is time travel tesseract is everything infinite in the universe but what do you choose the right path to your infinity and to your stable core timeline so you're not branching off on multiple timelines and getting lost stay the course stay the stable tesseract path then you know what your present and future is with a positive outcome based on the choices you make now. Okay, so if you were going to devise a mantra, because people are doing, you know, like, I asked that whatever, I want to create this, da, 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 da. What would be the mantra, would you say, that is the most beneficial for that? Anyone want to come up with a statement that, yes, go ahead. So you don't ask for anything. You have to, the only thing you should ask for is guidance, because again, when you ask for something, they look at it as greed, selfishness, and it's going to take you down the wrong path. So guidance is always the best thing. Because um, when you say I, you're taking away from the, you know, 
the God above you says you're making yourself the God and you expect him to give you gifts. It's like when we tell our children that are you <clears> one, aren't you? We are one, one, but there's a separation. We have a separation and Eliana's right with her statement that she just said, uh, you want to stay on the right path, but they're going to throw a wrench at you on purpose because again, you're, you're in the arena of the gods. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. And, and they need to be entertained. So <laughs> Okay. I mean, we all we think we think the arena is Rome, but no, it's it's the whole inner earth thing. That's where we're at. We're in inner earth. We're not inside the earth. We're inner earth surrounded by the other 75 countries. <clears throat> so interesting. Okay. So mantra or or what what would be the most productive way of staying on the Tesseract by guidance adventure just live have that adventure and you do have to make the choices it's it's kind of like a video game zelda well if i go here you know i'm gonna fight this guy if i go there i'm gonna get this treasure if i go here you know there's and that so in the ancient times where the wizards would send their you know their uh meant or, what or whatever yeah and they would send them on quests right it, they really they were just sending them away for them to discover themselves. What they were looking for was already inside them. But they can't just tell them, oh, hey, it's right here. I mean, you and I have done that for years, <laughs> trying to tell people, why do you got to go so far? Everything you need is right here. Hmm. But people need to discover. They need to grow. You need to have accidents. You need to feel something. It's like we tell our kids, man, how many times are you going to hit your head on that wall until you realize it hurts? <laughs> You know, it might be a lot until they realize, man, I've got a headache, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's self-discovery, self-awareness. And we do have to, and my grandma sometimes would even tell me how many times are you going to jump in front of a moving train before you get, you can't take that. And I was like, I guess as long as it takes, <laughs> right. right. I was like, sometimes people need to jump in front of a train and hope they can make it to the other side. And I've been fortunate enough. I've made it to the other side, but mm -hmm. there's that day I was waiting for somebody to hit me real hard till it was my last moment. I'm just working that fine line of one separation from, you know, whatever the the gods of creator, where you have to be careful with the what ifs, but you also are having adventures and, and, you know, want different experiences. So well, look at the movie Lord of the Rings yes. where they're in the tunnels and they, they've come to the cross, the, the two or the three crossroads and they're sitting there and the wizard is waiting for a sign and everybody thought magically he just figured it out he was like oh no i can smell the clean air <laughs> yes yes you know that's that's your what if. if yeah you don't you don't say well what if i go down here you know he was waiting he was showing them patience even though it took a long time and they were thinking man we don't got that much time you know but he has a lot of time and he was going to make sure he smelled the fresh air and not the rot of death <laughs> well well said because you want to be able to tune into nature and nature will respond to you and let you know also you know your surroundings will not let you know if you pay attention yeah the energy frequency what you embody is what you hold within yourself so i am healed if if you think of yourself as healthy i am healed if you say i am sick you attract the sickness energy to you so don't attract what you don't want to have inside yourself or around you make your own reality positive manifestation is about i am healthy I am successful. I am manifesting good things in my life. I am on the right track in my life. This way, you're doing the I am of the internal God creator that you are, and you're not taking anything away from the other gods and creators. You're focusing on your internal body within and your soul frequency to be the best that you can be in the light frequency and the light and the physicality. Your energy is your soul, and it's also your physicality as a creator being so focus on the positive and you create the positive mm -hmm. focus and the positive tesseract timeline because you can make many timelines but you want to be on the most stable one to focus on what you need to do in your life to be happy successful i am is your internal self the chronometer of taking care of yourself it's it's not i want more money i want this i am this this and that that's just external things of society and materialism. You are energy. Focus on your energetic creation and your energetic well-being and health. Then you are healthy. You embody what you create, input, output. 
focus on that. that. That is the energy of the internal creation that we are to express it. How you express it is up to you by the thoughts you have, by the actions you take, the consequences. Do you learn from it? If you didn't, it'll come back again energetically as the, as the lesson. So yeah. once you learn it, you don't repeat it again because you got it. You were here. You were present. You were in the moment. You did it. Then something else comes in as an experience and life continues as the cycle, the energy cycle. Well said. Thank you. Apollo me. Yeah, like Ileana was saying, and if you're stuck in that mode of fear and confusion, like you need to take a moment of silence and just put your tech away and focus on yourself and feel why, why are you anxious? Why are, do you keep having all this bad energy come to you? If you feel like you've been hexed or cursed or whatever you want to call it, these negative entities, you can push those entities out of your existence but you have to have the willpower to do it and the know-how. And the first thing to do that is to figure out how they're doing it and what it is that you're feeling inside you. Because once you have control of yourself, you have control of your environment energetically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's beautifully said. In the beginning, we knew how to commune with elements and nature, and we were alchemists, right? And I imagine all three of you are trained in magic and alchemy, right? More or less, whatever, however you want to say it. Uh, <clears throat> super soldiers go there. Um, and especially if you have Celtic and American Indian heritage a lot, you're very in tune with the elements. So Mary, all three of you, I'd like to ask this because I do think nature tells you, okay? My experience is when I pay attention to nature, why a bird went a certain way, what, you know, if we learn to connect with that. So do each of you have a story, shall we say, of where, you're, where you could call it magical or alchemy, which is advanced science, where the elements helped you get through a tough situation. Because I know mastery is often about mastering elements. Okay? So who wants to go first? You got some free will here. <laughs> Fine, I'll go. I'll do it. Um, I'm always connected to the elements, to nature. Every time I go into a new microclimate, a new place, I will sense whether the energy is good there or not. This is how I choose my homes and my living space. I just tap into the frequency. If I'm in the neighborhood, I will feel the neighbors, what the neighbors are thinking telepathically. I will ask the universe, is there a power plant near here is there a horse farm is there a tower electrical tower and i will get a vibration and a ping showing me yes no so i will use my body like a natural pendulum system to sense my environment to make sure i'm in the right place because i'm very sensitive to the environment and the place and the people so i will scout it out energetically i will stand there for 10 minutes and just connect to the whole universe of the microcosm of this neighborhood and its people is it healthy? Is it not healthy? And I will, it'll give me the download of all the questions I have and that I decide, can I live here or not based on the answers I get from the natural landscape of where I am and from the people in this neighborhood. And that's one little microcosm of a whole existence on this planet. So you have to go to each section of where you might want to live and test it out before you make a choice of where you want to be. So it doesn't I don't need to say a specific event or a place. I just, every time I go somewhere, this is what I do to make sure it's safe for me or not, because I sense everything in reality and it's telling me details of what this is or isn't, whether I should be here or not. Sometimes it's none of my business okay. to be in a place. So then I just gently leave and go somewhere where I should be. So that's a, those are great suggestions. Thank you. Who wants to go next? You know, Apollo, me. Oh, Mary. Okay. Okay. I guess, I guess I'm going, you know, and interacting with the elements, like I've always had a special connection with the elements. If I ask for a certain day to be sunny, I'll ask the elementals to, you know, 
have that day to be sunny from this day to that day. Or I can do it myself occasionally when I'm allowed to have all my abilities. You know, I'll, I'll, it's kind of weird. I'll do it like a dragon cry and all of a sudden the sun will start to part the clouds. Oh, there cool. was a, uh, there can was you one. Do that? <laughs> can you do that right now? <laughs> it has to be in the area. Dragon, I can't. A dragon cry or will everything crash if you do that? Hi. Well, no, because like it has to be in the area that that I'm in. Okay. Um, I mean, I can ask. Well, here, let's share like, energies. Come on, no. Right. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want the snowstorm. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't either. I I know me and a couple other people in the city that I'm in. We've been pushing it aside, so it'll always <laughs> snow around the towns around us right now. But we're just like, we want to. Yeah, we just didn't want the snow. It's like you can snow around us, that's fine. We just don't want it in the city. Careful, Mother Nature is gonna like have some explosions on you. <laughs> well, I ask the elementals because they know the air currents yeah. more than I do. I've had my bouts of trying to control it myself, and it's fine around my area, but it gets a little weird around you know two towns over, and I'm like, ah, maybe I should you know learn a little bit more before I do that. <laughs> oh, you mean the fallout to towns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You the, don't want to just be selfish with your request. In other the, the last time I did that, uh, the two towns over, well, four towns over, ended up getting six feet of snow. So I'm like, <laughs> in one night. So I'm just like, oh, okay, but. You know, if you're looking for answers, nature will provide for you, but you have to be aware and look up, you know, and just stop having your face in your phone all the time, you know, because like, this is going to be kind of a weird story. Before I knew I was in the programs and being abducted, like I knew that some things were going on. I always knew that I had abilities, but there was one time where I felt like I was pregnant and that's impossible because I'm in, I'm incapable of having kids uh but I kept feeling like it like I kept feeling like I was pregnant and I kept feeling it and when that happens like there's a change in your frequency and your chemistry that is just unmistakable like there is no there th and I had felt this once before when I had my first child with one of the inner earth males so I knew what this feeling was and, and it was, you know, so, but I kept asking, I asked for four days, like hardcore shouting out, you know, been like, Hey, I need a sign. Is this something that's been happening? You know? And I kid you not, I was at work one day. It was a nice, clear sky blue day. And I went to throw out the trash and I look up cause I had asked it like 10 minutes ago again. And I look up and I kid you not, I took a picture with my cell phone, everything. And there was literally no written in the clouds of the clouds. There was just no N O the, the N was kind of pointy and the O was unmistakable. And I were right next to each other. And I took a picture and I showed my boss and he's like, well, someone got their answer. Cause I didn't tell him what happened. I was like, yeah, I'm sure they did. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good example. What about you, Mary? <laughs> I just go hug a tree. Oh, <laughs> They're the oldest form of life other than water on the planet. So they're oh. connected to the earth's core. So what was, what was mm. the last message you received from a tree? Hmm. Uh, you know, I really can't say. <laughs> Top secret. <laughs> well, it might upset like the world, but yeah, <laughs> I had to think about that. I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> They're like, have fun while you can, because we. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. <laughs> so, so I things, but, well, let me see if I can hint at it. Uh, <laughs> um, something's supposed to resurrect. Um, oh. it's it's not it's not the second coming of Christ. It's it's a program that was murdered. Uh, maybe two hundred years ago, but. It was a program that Christ had put together. Now the Illuminati are going to be like, what? Uh, <laughs> okay. So I've literally been like battling this. I was angry at the trees. I was out there cutting firewood and I was yelling at the trees. Like, no, <laughs> this is not, mm -hmm. we are not doing this. <laughs> I don't care if you drop down on me right now. We are not doing this. 
uh but it's it so it Was is this program a, negative is that why no 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 it's very positive but it 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 has the same name as one of the bad ones because it was taken over. It was like everything good taken over, oh, okay. right? Okay, okay. But it was by, um, it was a program initial well put into place by Christ or Yeshua a long time ago as yeah. a fail safe for something in the future. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, and I mean, it we can do it. I'm just trying to figure out how but i mean other than that like if you if you want to self-heal because the trees love to heal um the native americans that's why they're always out in the woods for like days at a time if you if you find like a a, a trove of small trees uh lined up you know like three or two on either side whichever and there's like a kind of a, a little bed like area you could put leaves and stuff something comfortable lay in between it and just get lost just let your mind go let it all go the trees will protect you from nature so i mean unless you're there to create chaos and then you might get attacked by a mountain lion or something but um that's the only time that nature actually comes after you if you are considered toxic or disrespectful um you have to respect everything you go into so before you walk anywhere into any kind of national forest or something like that you have to touch a tree and just close your eyes and just say i'm i'm just here to get away from it all you know i'm, I'm here to you know cleanse myself and you'll have a good experience i mean you'll see animals they'll test you they'll put deer and rabbit out there to make sure you're not going to kill them and if you didn't ask for them as food which we know we're not starving out here anymore we have all that fake food we can eat um you just you have to go in peace it's it's their house so you don't want people just walking into your house right you're going to get defensive so but being in between trees they will heal you heal your elements cleanse you out do what they have to do and native americans and some ssp soldiers uh actually harness the earth's energy to heal broken bones mm -hmm. so that's awesome yeah so follow me to let you know those broken bones have to be set okay it's not going to magically snap in place <laughs> well right yeah, yeah yeah so yeah you do have to set it but they can wield the energies you know <laughs> i just wanted to clarify yeah. just in case someone's like oh, okay. then you rebuild the calcium and you rebuild mm -hmm. the um ligaments and all the other stuff to make it strong and give it a framework again right so yeah i i it's it's me and the the earth's energy but the trees are very important so i think it's very very important to stay connected with that put the put the tech down for a while but speaking of abilities and abilities to tune in and listen to nature and follow nature um why don't we do a last subject that uh is a passion about all these arcs people for those that are new, we didn't really explain. Most of them, them are ancient spaceships and they're all around the world. They're in Japan, Hawaii, um, Romania. The first one that I heard about was in Antarctica from a secret space program, Cosmic Disclosure by Emery Smith, who said, when they said, who is going to provide truth disclosure? He said, the earth herself, she is uncovering and melting something in, uh, in and the ice is being melted in Antarctica yeah. as, as the first one will be revealed. So Mary, tell me what you know about that. If you've been there, if you accessed any of the uh, huge things that are there. Oh, um, so I don't have all my memories of everywhere that I've been. I do not remember being in Antarctica. I do not uh, soul travel uh, because you can uh, trespass if you for remote viewing and stuff. So I don't do that. Okay. Um, and I get I know that some people, a lot of people, do it and might have permission or might not. Uh, I do know somebody got recently zapped by one of the space arcs by doing that um, because they can still feel you. They know you're there and so um well you can only yeah. even get access if you have the same dna 
or 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 no anybody can go on it even the state the you know the 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 extremes can go on it they just can't activate it yeah 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 okay yeah. okay now when they're okay. from my knowledge when they're activated they put up a shield so you can go in it but when they're activated into a uh i would say a rescue they're gonna they're not gonna let you know certain people on there you know you get you have to be a certain level of cleanse level of consciousness purity uh, they mm -hmm. and you you know they know your soul they know everything about you if your soul's too weak they're not gonna let you on there um because what they're gonna do is these arcs like again back 65 billion years ago there was more so when they helped flee uh the reptanoids off the the planet they took them to again the delta quadrant they could have even gone to other ones i just know about the ones that went to the delta quadrant and they actually came back around 2015 uh because the earth sent out a signal because atlantis used to be the protector of this planet for atlantis well we we already did my atlantis uh interview so uh I was basically there for the create actual creation of Atlantis before the first fall of Atlantis, which seems to be where humanity is starting to know the history, but they don't know the actual history of mm -hmm. the, the actual beginning part. But knowing who took it over now, it, it's no surprise on, you know, that history getting erased. Mm. But yeah, we had things all over the the world and and back then the world looked completely different there wasn't that much this much of a sea okay <laughs> the ocean did not was not this vast uh but antarctica was not covered in ice at that time it was actually a huge port it was kind of like the black market so you had like giants and almost every other species there on the planet going through there's a lot of atlantean technology over there um that was of the trading i don't no, know no. anything about atlantis after i had died uh protecting it from dark draco king lucifer um so they could have a lot more stuff over there i know i have had missions from section 13 to try and hack into some of them uh some of the areas that had the artifacts and uh, as for the the arcs, I only know about the ones from the Starseed Council that were given out to only the original creators of this era of man. So those ones are a lot more sophisticated. They have a lot more Hanovian technology, and they have a complete sentient AI and, and higher crystal technology uh, than most things. You cannot go on those unless you've passed your ascension mark. So, and are those buried also on Earth or in the oceans here right now? They are technically what most people would call the Gardens of Eden type uh, arcs. They provide a lot of stuff. So, wherever the many creators decided to have their territories and start their projects because each one of them has individual uh species of human to set down with their own agendas and so those arcs provided the ecosystems for the area that they wanted uh provided knowledge of you know the ascension and uh, many other things, usually about like their deity and what their deity wanted th to have them do. So it all, it every single one of those pretty much varied. Okay, and I know Eliana, you've had a lot of experience remote viewing. You've had several lifetimes on Atlantis. Anything you want to say for that? Yeah, so my main Atlantean lifetime was a geneticist, and when they were doing the chimeras, bringing animal feline DNA with human DNA, and it, they had secret underground labs where they did that in secret, and it impacted people to this generation. The bodies, the mutations, stuff happens now that it happened then, and it's being repeated. Now we don't want that to repeat. That's the geneticist life. And I lost somebody to the sons of Belial. 
because they were the ones inverting human genetic code and they weren't supposed to do that and that's how the mutations happen. Then I had a mermaid lifetime defending against the reptilians when they were bombarding energy weapons on Atlantis and basically destroying the crystalline outposts and the towers and the pyramids, just bombarding the portals, destroying the portals so they can leave the earth. That was millions of years ago. So original Atlantis started two million years ago where you had the galactic humans come in and they wanted to do a peace, coexist together in peace, fifth, sixth dimensional coming to earth and it fell 3D because the crystalline technology was misused. But that was two million years ago. We've had like four or five epochs of Atlantis, different periods with different uh, timelines and technology, more technology, less evolved, more evolved. So Atlantis is not just one time period, it's several. Uh, I know that there's a lot of crystalline technology and a lot of different Atlantean, there's an arc ship in Antarctica, it's partly Atlantean, partly something else. Yep, there you go. It looks crystalline, <clears throat> it has crystalline technology. That's from Antarctica. So when you when you emailed all of that to us, I recognize that because it's something similar that I saw. It has a lot of crystalline technology. The bad guys with a bad frequency can't go inside because it's not coded for them. It's coded for a higher vibrational frequency. So th they also have language symbols, light language, some of them. And if you can connect to that frequency, you can go in with a positive vibration. But if you're not encoded to it, you can't go in. So you have to have positive thoughts to even get to this technology. And Atlanteans had outposts in Antarctica with different crystalline technology. Um, they had citadels on Venus as well, some Atlantean technology, turquoise. I saw a citadel that looked similar to Atlantean technology with the ancient builder races. So their technology is not just on Earth. It's in other places, Peru. It's on Mars. It's on Venus. It's on Neptune, it's on other planets as well, but Earth, they had many outposts. It wasn't, Atlantis wasn't just in the Atlantic Ocean, it was in many places. And when Atlantis fell, they moved to Kemet, Egypt. And the Syrians and the Atlanteans worked together with the crystalline technologies and the grid systems to shield and protect the planet against certain encroachers and invaders, because there were re rebellions from Atlantis. Okay, well, this, this boy, we're gonna have to do another one when it's convenient, because I know there's a time issue here, and we are closing down. So uh, I need people to have your contacts. So start with Mary, how they how they can reach you. Um, I they can use my email, uh, Mary at IGYSIX dot org. Okay, and do you have a <clears throat> website or YouTube's yet or anything? Uh, no, I'll be building a new one. Um, the government took my last one down. They finally gave it back, but it was already like unparked because it had been down so long. So it's a it's an opportunity to build a new one. So we'll get it out there. <laughs> okay, and Apollo me. <clears throat> uh, people can get a hold of me at uh, Apollo me Mandillion at gmail dot com. And then uh, we also, well, I have, you know, my, my YouTube channel of Galaxy of Unity projects, and uh, you guys can check us out at uh, galaxyofunity.squarespace.com. For your academy, for those that are interested in learning from you, which one is, do they access? For, so for I'm- email. Yeah, I have started an academy for uh, people learning basically the super soldier and ET knowledge that I've had of energy manipulation. You guys can use my Apollo me email to get a hold of that. Please do not use the galaxy of email for that. My producer is starting to get like, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> a lot of people are sending it to the galaxy of unity email and it's just flooding our, <laughs> our invoice. Yeah, uh, understandable. Thank you. And quickly, Ileana, how do they contact you? <clears throat> So uh, you can contact me through the email seeking the truth and reality at gmail.com. Uh, my website is messages from a star traveler and that's where I do all that psychic stuff, um, sessions, healing. Uh, my channel is Awakening Cosmic Reality Show, the YouTube channel and it talk, covers many different subjects, ETs, 
archships, Atlantis, many wonderful things, universal knowledge as well, galactic history. Um, so that's how I can be reached and found. Wonderful. Thank you so much, you three. This has just been so much fun for me. And you sharing your vast wisdom that people would not acquire otherwise. I so appreciate what all three of you have endured to do your mission that very few would know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and everyone, all truth awaits in our hearts and we can do this. So go team onwards and upwards. <laughs> Till next time. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.